Hey everyone, Ray Delvecchio here. And today I'm gonna to show you how you can harness AI to transform your web design process by creating CSS code that you can copy and paste. This is so powerful and I think the crazy part is how much you can use AI to generate. So I'm actually gonna have it create a skeleton HTML file that we're gonna work off of and I'll show you this process. So here's the prompt that I'll use to create something really simple. I'm asking for a skeleton HTML file for a business website homepage that includes a header, a hero section, a three blurb section and a footer. So let's get this HTML code. I'll paste this into a file and I can just drag and drop this right into Google Chrome. So we got this code. I'll just hit the copy button and go over to this empty folder, create a new text file, but I'll change the extension to HTML. And then let me open this file. We'll paste in our HTML. And I'm also going to create this CSS file. So this is where we're going to generate our design. So we'll create styles.css in the same directory. And then let me open this up right in Chrome. Drag and drop this into a new tab. So here's our bare bones HTML with no styles to it. So we'll go back to our chat window. And right at the bottom, they're asking us if we want CSS or JavaScript enhancements. So I'm just gonna say yes for CSS and let it generate whatever it wants to. And then we're gonna further customize it after that. And they explain some of these key features. I'm just gonna copy it. And I wanna show you one other thing. I've actually been using a desktop program to do these AI chats as opposed to chatgpt.com. I'll link it up, it's called Chatbox. There's a lot of really cool features. I'm not gonna dive into all of them, but I just wanna show you that one thing you could do is create these roles. So I have a role here called CSS Formatter. And all I do is paste in CSS code and it already has instructions built in to format it exactly how I like it. So if I just paste in that CSS code and hit enter on this role, the CSS formatter role within this program, it automatically gives me these styles in a more organized, concise way that I like. So let me open up style.css and we'll paste in our CSS code. And you can see one of the things that I like doing is creating sections of the CSS code which describe where it's being customized. So this is our header code, our hero section code. And then down here, this is the responsive design where you can set your breakpoints at a certain pixel width. So let's just hit save. Let's go back and refresh our page and see what it looks like. Now what I like to do is from here, the AI to me is great if you just ask it to generate options. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste a segment of HTML and ask it for three to five options. We'll go to index.html and here's our three blurb section. So I'm just going to copy this entire section and I'll go back to our chat window and say, give me five CSS options for this HTML element and then I'll just paste in the element right below. And then now you can do this just on the live website by using Google Chrome Inspector. So they're naming each of these options. You got modern card design, gradient background with overlays, minimalist. So once this is done generating, let me go ahead and test these out by right clicking and hitting inspect. And I'll be able to jump into my CSS file right from over here. I could just click that. And let me actually bring these up next to each other. I think that these are gonna overwrite my three blurb section. I could either just paste it right to the bottom. Let me do that. In which case, it's probably gonna merge these two. And you can see the effect that's happening right here. Let me hit Control Z to undo that. And then let me overwrite this three blurb section and see if it looks different. And there you can see the border's gone. Now, I still don't like that each of these is on its own row. I want these to be in a single row with three columns and then drop down to one per row for mobile responsive. So that's something I can ask for. But let me test out these other styles. So let's do this. So I'll just hit Control Z to remove. I already got this highlighted, so I can just paste it in. That looks pretty cool, but obviously the color clashing with this hero section. Let's try the next option. And this one, it has the highlighted border when you hover over it. Go option number four. And this gives you a circular layout. And then option number five, split color cards. Let's see what this looks like. And I don't mind that one. That has a nice contrast. I think either that or option two is my favorite. And then let's go back and copy option five again. And what I'm gonna try and do is merge these two. 
So what I'm going to ask for here is this orange contrast color, but I do like on the second option how it had the different background color as opposed to white. So I'll say I want to use the design from option two. However, I want the contrast color like the orange in option five. And I'll say make the blurb boxes orange and the background for the section a light gray gradient. And then I will include the last note to do the positioning. I also want a one row, three column layout on desktop that is mobile optimized to show one per row on smaller devices. So I think this will be good enough. And as long as you do a good job with describing what you want, that helps out a ton. And if you have any knowledge of CSS and you can use specific language like the CSS properties, that's even better. Let me copy that and see if I could just paste this in here. For some reason, we're not doing well with the positioning. So we're going to have to work on that. I also don't love the animation, so I'm going to ask to remove that. So for this prompt, I'll say the desktop three-column layout isn't working. Please fix and remove the hover animation. And I'm also going to ask it to give me the full CSS file. That way, I could just copy and paste the whole thing, just in case there's any um, issues or conflicting statements here. So we'll let this generate. And I can already tell that it didn't give me exactly what I wanted here. I asked for the full CSS file, but it's just giving me the top level body styles along with the blurbs. It doesn't have the header styles or the other sections. Let me copy that instead of copying everything here. Just that snippet and let me paste it in. It looks like some funky characters got added here, the new line character. I've never seen that be happen before. Let me hit the undo button, and I will just copy and paste here and just remove those other sections. And for some reason here, this is doing it all in the left column. So let me try this. I'm just going to say, no, every element is in the leftmost column stacked in a single column and see what it does. And it says that this might be an issue caused by the default width setting or missing container styles. So let's copy this and we will paste this in. Let me go up here so I can remove all this. And this is where things are kind of going haywire. Usually at this point, what I'll do is I'll just completely start a new chat. Sometimes the context gets messed up when you're talking about multiple options here. The other thing is there's another service called Claude. For me, it does a little bit better with code. That's one of the things I really love about using this desktop app. You can choose your model over here. So this is the free chat GPT level. It uses this model, GPT-40 Mini. But if you like, you can use these more powerful models. And then you can also change your model provider. So I'm going to switch over to my role here that I created called Software Developer. And I'm going to change the model provider to Claude. The model is called Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I have a new thread created here. This is another feature I like. You can just hit a button to refresh the context, which means it just forgets your past conversation and starts a new conversation. But it does it within a single thread, so I don't have to create a new chat window. So let me take this code that I've been playing around with from Google Chrome Inspector, and I'm going to copy and paste it into my styles.css file. So let me try and debug this with Claude and see if this does a better job than ChatGPT. For this, I can really just copy and paste both files if I'd like, but I'm going to just do it with the section. And I'm going to paste this in here, and then I'll go over to the styles. I'm going to copy and paste this entire style sheet just in case some of these other elements are interacting. And there's a couple of different ways that you can identify what these snippets of code are. So you can use markdown format, which is really just using the pound sign or the hashtag sign for the header. So for this, I'll just call it style.css, paste in my CSS, and then I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to call this HTML snippet. And then at the top here, this is where I'll write my prompt. Now, by the way, another thing that you can do is take a screenshot and upload that screenshot to the chat. Sometimes that does an even better job than describing it. Or in addition to describing it, it helps it out a lot. But for this, I'll just say all my blurbs are showing in the first column instead of a proper three-column layout that's optimized for mobile. Another thing that I don't love about this is how the gray background doesn't extend. So let me see if I could fix that as well. So I'll say the gray background of this section should be 
full width to the browser. And then I'm specifically going to ask just to rewrite the CSS and give me the full CSS file. So I'll say rewrite and provide the new full style.css file. So let's see how this new model does. And one thing about Claude is that I get a lot more of these errors, and they seem to be limited a lot more than ChatGPT, which is a little bit more reliable. This is a temporary thing. I can just delete this and resubmit this. And they're telling us here that we do have some unchanged styles, so I can just copy this individually. But let me specifically ask for the full file. I want the full file that I can copy and paste. So now it's given us everything. So I can just do this all in one shot. It just makes it a lot easier. And here you can see we have much more elaborate responsive design styles with a couple different breakpoints. So let me go up here and copy this code. Let's test it out. Just resize this, go up here. Let me hit backspace and that shows us our blank page. And now I'll paste in this full file. And as expected, this did a better job than the free version of ChatGPT. So this kind of goes to show you the difference in model that you use as well as the way that you provide the code to the chat or provide context in the form of code snippets, the way you describe it, or an image. Like I said, this is why I like using this desktop app that lets you switch between models easily. I wrote up a little AI cost comparison to show you the way that I use it. Instead of paying the subscription for any of these services, you can use all of them and just pay per usage. So let me link up this comparison in the description below. But let's go back here and do the exact same thing with the hero section. So we'll do this with Claude. We'll go back to our chat. And on here, I'm going to clear the context, start a new conversation. And I'm just going to ask for five CSS options for this hero section. We've hit this overloaded message again. So it must be tough going over there at this uh, company. Anthropic is the company that makes Claude. We still got four or five of these styles that we could just test out right here. So let's copy this and try them out. So there's a nice big hero section. Obviously, this would look a lot better if it had a background image plugged in here. Let's check out option number two. So this one specifically says that you want a background image and an overlay. So I'll go ahead and create a placeholder image that I can put into here to test it out. We'll undo that, paste in the new one. Let me go ahead and pick an image, and I'll plug that into this directory. So I got an image in here now. Let's go back and refresh that update the CSS and see if that loads in. So now if I just hit the space button, you can see our image is loaded in. By the way, this image was created by AI. I think I used Google Gemini to create this image for a concrete driveway. So let's go back and check our other styles. Let's do our third style in modern split design. Control V to paste it in. I'm sure this is meant to have something over here on the right side, but right now it's completely blank. So let's just move on to the next one. And this one is a minimalist with animated border. So let's test this one out. That also looks very nice. Nice little gradient background there. So you can see how easy it is to just get simple designs in CSS code that you can copy and paste in. I've been doing this a ton lately instead of starting from scratch. And it usually does a better job than I probably could do even if I was spending an hour or two to do it myself. You can see this has a little animation built in through this keyframes CSS. You could really implement a lot even if you don't understand the code behind the scenes just by asking these questions. So as I mentioned, check out my guide at AIProductivitySecrets.com. I'll link that up in the description below. I'm going to create a digital product around all the different ways that I've been using AI like this. I'll show you exactly how I set up all these different roles, as well as give you the prompt templates for each of these roles. That's really the secret sauce behind getting the answers that you want with the correct context, but also customize around the things that you do every day so you can be a lot more productive in your workflow. As part of this, I'm also going to include some of the tools I built. One of them is a website generator that creates raw code websites like this as opposed to WordPress, and it lets you generate a website in the click of a button. I also created a WordPress article generator, a blog post generator, so you can quite literally go to this tool, type in a one sentence idea for an article, and this is going to generate that complete article for you. On top of that, it's going to format it in WordPress format that you can copy and paste. So it's got WordPress block formatting. 
even one step further, I created this little option to enable you to save it as a WordPress draft. So it does all this at the click of a button. I want to give you these tools, not just so that you can use them, but so you can build on them and create your own customizations to them because that's really the most powerful way to use AI. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, if you have any cool uses of AI, you figured out something that really improves your workflow, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll link up a couple other videos here if you want to keep on learning.